Now I mentioned that the determinant will help you determine if a matrix has an inverse and if a system of equations is solvable, but this dude named Gabriel Kramer figured out something more. He determined that you can actually use the determinants themselves to actually solve the system, so no need to invert, no need to use row operations, no need to set up a system of equation, no row operations, none of that. Just use the determinant to find the solution to a system of equations. Now, I actually like Kramer's rule. It's pretty cool. Now, let me show you what he noticed and what he was able to prove. Now, of course, he proved it beyond a two by two. He was able to prove this rule for all matrices, which is why we named it after him. All right. So first, he noticed that if I set up a system of equations where a1 and b1 and c1 are the coefficients and the constants for the first equation, and then a2, b2, and c2 are the coefficients and constant for the third, he noticed that the solutions every single time would be these calculations. You take c1 times b2, subtract off c2 times b1, and put it over a1, b2 minus a2, b1. And then y would work similarly. Now, these numbers should, you know, make you think, well, hey, those kind of look like determinants. That one for sure on the bottom is the determinant of the coefficient matrix. But what's with the c1 and the c2? Well, he noticed that if, when you're solving for x, if you replace the coefficients of the x in the equation, so replace a1 and a2, the coefficients of x, with the constants and found the determinant of that, that is the numerator for x. And then if I replace the b column when solving for y, which were the coefficients of y, and you made a little determinant, that's the other way to solve x and y. So if you're given some system, a1, b1, a2, b2 coefficient matrices, x and y, things you're solving for, c1 and c2, the constants in those equations. If I define d as the determinant of the coefficient matrix, d sub x as that coefficient matrix with the x coefficients replaced with c1 and c2 are the constants, and d sub y, I do the same thing, I replace the coefficients of the y's with c1 and c2, then the solution to the system is just dx over d and dy over d. So it's all about just using the determinants. All he did was he replaced the coefficients with the constants for the variable he was trying to solve for. So let's try that with this system here. Now I'm going to use my calculator to find those determinants just because I have the calculator. So first I need to find d and that would be this here, 2, negative 5, negative 4, 3. So I'm going to find the determinant of the coefficient matrix. d sub x is I'm going to replace the 2 and the negative 4 with a 3 and an 8 because I'm solving for x and then I'm going to replace it with negative 5 and 3 as normal. And then d sub y, I want to keep the x coefficients and this time replace the y coefficients with those 3 and 8s. And I'm just going to go ahead and find all these determinants with my calculator. And I get those values. So I know that the x value has to be 49 over negative 14. And y has to be 28 over negative 14. Which gives me that x equals negative 7 halves and y equals negative 2. Now, this next thing uh, is going to look very intimidating, but it's actually the formal definition of Kramer's rule. So it says a system of n linear equations in n variables, meaning square coefficient matrix, has a coefficient matrix A with non-zero determinant. And that's just how you write the determinant of A. This is all the if, right? The solution of the system is the solution of the first x is the determinant a sub 1 over the determinant of a, second variable a sub 2 over a, dot dot dot, nth variable is a sub n over a, where the ith column is replaced of a sub i is the column of constants in the system of equations. So a fancy way of saying 
I'm going to replace the coefficients of x sub 1 with the constants here. I'm going to replace the coefficients of x sub 2 with the constants here, so on and so forth, and the coefficients of the nth variable with the constants in this one. And of course, if the determinant is 0, then the system has either no solutions or infinitely many solutions. So now we're going to use Kramer's rule to solve this system of equations. So for Kramer's rule, if I'm going to solve a 3 by 3, 3 equations, 3 unknowns, I need to do 4 determinants. The first determinant is going to be of just the coefficient matrix itself. So negative 1, 2, negative 3, 2, 0, 1, 3, negative 4, and 4. And then to solve for x, I'm going to replace the coefficients of x with the constants. So it's 1, 0, 2, 2, 0, negative 4, negative 3, 1, 4. Then to find y, I need to find the determinants of the matrix where the y coefficients are replaced with the constants. So 1, 0, 2 goes in the y column, and then negative 3, 1, 4. And then d sub z, which is the determinant I need to solve for z, has these columns intact, but the zth column is replaced with the coefficients. So now all I have to do is find all four of these determinants, and then I'll have my solution to my system. So finding the determinants with my trusted calculator, I get d is equal to 10, d sub x equals 8, d sub y equals negative 15, and d sub z equals negative 16, which means that x has to be 8 over 10, y has to be negative 15 over 10, and z has to be negative 16 over 10. And so simplifying those, I get a solution of 4 fifths, negative 3 halves, and negative 8 fifths. So yay, Kramer's rule. And actually, Kramer's rule does a couple of more things too, which you will see in the in-class activity. You can find areas of triangles, you can find equations of lines, you can determine if points are collinear, and that's all variations of Kramer's rule.